All right, we have a quorum, so we can begin tonight's meeting of the Community Preservation Committee. Um, the first item on the agenda is public comment, so if you want to step forward to the podium and tell us your name and address. All right. Hi, my name is Richard Royal. Um, I know 270 Pleasant Street. Um, basically, came here to discuss a historic building that's actually on the lot. And I just have an issue with taking tax money and stuff and tearing it down. Um, I do have some papers about the tax money. So. Point two fifty six and two seventy were the same address. And basically, in the pamphlet, they discuss how um, the old factory works. And as they stand, they're both basically identical to each other. And I would just like to see it preserved in some way to the best. We're not having money to actually be taken. Actually, support the tearing down of what Northampton, I believe, tries to accommodate in this town, which is history and what people come to see. But I wouldn't put it in the B plus category. Um, Before you start, Mike, the archive minutes are in a different place. What's that? The archive minutes aren't on, are in a different place than the city website. They are for everything. Where are they? They are. I'll send you one to it. Um, but they're they're not in that same agenda center. And they're, they're not. not they're not in that same agenda center. Only, so 2014 going forward, they're in this, that agenda center. Yeah. But everything else is is backlogged. In a different place. Yeah. Well, the question is that the Community Preservation Act says that your committee should keep a full and accurate account of all its actions, including its recommendations and actions taken on them, and records of all appropriations or expenditures. And you have a great deal of money that, that you are approving big projects. And in almost all other parts of the city governments, there are normally at the next and one meeting, they say, do we have the minutes for the last meeting? And the minutes are approved. And then the minutes are, are, then, are then posted in a public place, which is an important part of your role as a, in a, a commission. So, um, I guess we're shocked. <coughs> maybe they're, like you said, maybe, maybe they're somewhere, but they're not in the main page that is that the public would look for. If you go through the um, protocol, not the protocol, what do you call it? The, when you walk maybe. in the index, you're looking for the, the, the CPC, and you have a list of agendas posted, and you have all the agendas. And next to no, no um, minutes, and I, and I think it needs to be addressed. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, Sarah, I think we need to tell them where they are. Yeah, I'm, 
then, our, um, then I would suggest if they stay in that location that we put a note on this page that says that. Because there, I believe there is one. Okay. But my, I can't connect the yeah, But aren't they behind? Isn't it true? Because I, I will. We are a little bit behind, yeah. I've, I've been working on contracts and other things. How many months behind? Because I've noticed that before, too. So yeah, a few. But, but everything, everything that's, that's been approved is posted online. But it, it is in two different places. Well, I, I agree with the petitioner, and, and I, we are handing out a ton of money, and we ought to make those agendas available and visible to the public. I agree with you completely. And mm -hmm. and, uh, and if so, if we if they're posted in a different place, then we need to have a big print exactly where they are, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, that's just the way to do things. So I agree completely. Um, so. Um, uh, if, as long as somebody can get to them, you know, as long as people know where they are, right. that it was a fundamental part of the best practices uh, prior, that was passed yeah. two years ago. That uh, minutes would, would be taken and promptly posted in a public place. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much for listening. How is that? Up until this past year, when the city changed its website, everything was in one place, and then we prided ourselves on making sure that our meeting notes were robust and that we recorded the mm -hmm. dialogue that was occurring. We have areas in our website where you can look at every single project, the applications, the questions and answers, the responses from the applicants, all the public comment that's reported, as well as all of uh, the public support letters that come in. And so it is there, but I agree with you, if people aren't able to access it, that's a problem and it's something that we should rectify. All right, other public comment. Hi, good evening. My name is Sherry Smith. I'm the director of special education for the Collaborative Educational Services. We have an alternative school at 220 Pleasant Street. And um, I'm here on behalf of our organization this evening. We just wanted to express a little bit of concern about how rapidly things are moving forward um, with limited input from the letters that, are, that seem to be in the area. Uh, we have a concern on whether or not the impact of such a project and the size of such a project has actually taken into account the impact it could have or would have on a school that is right around the neighborhood. Um, we don't know whether we are dedicated as a child safety zone. Um, we are certainly not marked right now in the city as a school zone which needs to be rectified. And um, we certainly also have concerns about traffic safety in the area, whether a traffic study has been done because already um, traffic is either hugely congested or goes by quite quickly, which has made it very dangerous for our students when we are trying to cross the street. Uh, another concern that we have is what is going to happen to Short Street. Currently, Short Street is uh, a private way, and it ends in the parking lot where our employees park. And it's already a challenge in terms of do, they, do we have enough parking spot? But even more importantly, is that is the, the way and means by which the buses come in in the morning. Uh, they're all school um, Van full vans that come in in the morning to drop the students off, and it's the afternoon where it's very congested because it tends to be upwards of eight to a dozen vans at any time in the afternoon that have to come in in that very narrow way and turn around the parking lot and line up to exit. So, those are some of the pressing concerns for us that we just want the community to be aware of. I'm sorry, I missed the name of the school. Hex Academy. It's an alternative learning program of the Collaborative for Educational Services, which is located on the <coughs> side of the street. And how many students and how many employees roughly? We can have up to 44 students in the building. Uh, we, with that, we can have at uh, any time 22 to 30 plus 40 staff in the building. It's different days. We have staff that are there um, on a daily basis to support the needs of our students, which are our teachers and our paraprofessionals and our administrative staff. But our special education office is located there as well, and the professionals that work out of our office, such as speech and language pathologists, OTs, PTs, those individuals are based in our building. So there's some days where there's lots of folks there, and other days where there's fewer employees there. Um, but always we have the, the students and the staff in there that, that support the students. Thank you. I'm Mary Finn Cole, North 274 Pleasant Street in Northampton. I'm an immediate abutter to the proposed 256 uh, lumber yard development. Thanks for entertaining me again this week.
I'm sorry to have stretched you out. We have to read. Perfectly fine. Totally worth it. <coughs> Pardon me if some of this is redundant from yeah. the previous week. I have had a chance to, to read a little more and talk a little bit more with my neighbors. Again, I'm a little uncertain of the city process, so forgive me if I'm out of, out of line or what have you. Um, I tried to put into writing some of my concerns. Um, you all are stewards to preserve Northampton, to preserve the community of Northampton. Um, community basically means neighbors. It doesn't mean government officials. And it doesn't necessarily mean committees or developers. Community is the neighbors. Uh, that big piece has been missing. Um, I do feel that for you all to take public monies and fund the demolition of a historic building, <coughs> which I did not realize was historic until recent days, um, and to use public monies to develop a site that's really expensive to develop, and to do so without community input, um, I, I really feel like it goes against your duty on your committee because you're to preserve the community of Northampton, and I don't think that this design dovetails with that. Um, I just want to draw your eye to a couple of points on, on this very long letter, which I apologize for its length. The CPF application states um, that the project complements the surrounding neighborhood. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't have complementary features and materials, design, scale, or use. It might adhere to a revised zoning that was revised about two years ago. It doesn't adhere to the Sustainable Northampton Plan that was devised in 2008. Uh, the application states that there was an architectural review. If there was, it's not attached to the application. And if there was, I'm not sure if the architect's eyes were open in my neighborhood or if they walked through it. Um, I think as a neighbor and a community member, it would be helpful to see the content of an architectural review drawn by professionals and to see how the points in that architectural review dovetailed with the design elements and the scale. As I mentioned before, the model of development is antiquated. Technically, this building might be called mixed use because there's two itsy bitsy spots for rent, one for the Valley CDC and one for some other undesignated tenant of about 1,500 square feet. Um, pretty much all that first floor is affordable housing. All the other three floors are affordable housing. We can call it mixed use. I guess maybe technically by definition it is mixed use. In my mind, it's not mixed use. It's not mixed income. It doesn't have market rate. And it doesn't have retail or any vibrancy that would help the economic part of, part of that town, that area of town. Community awareness and input is critical to any kind of project like this. Um, there's 10 principles for developing affordable housing that the Urban Land Institute put out on the web if you Google it. Principle two is called community support. Being worthy of trust builds trust in others. Two key developer qualities, dedication, quality, open communication, facilitate collaboration, consensus, etc. There's a number of bullet points in this 38-page document. It talks about using innovative and traditional techniques to make awareness in the community, inform the community, talks about internet sites that show images of the design, architectural renderings that include the surrounding buildings, virtual communal model, community, uh, computer models, open houses, where community members show up and have one-on-one -on -one discussions with the developers, community workshops, advisory groups, all that completely skipped. The, the CPA application um, talks about letters of support, which are primarily written by housing advocates, and I respect housing advocates and the need for housing in our community, don't get me wrong. But when I looked into those letters, there was about a dozen of them, uh, a city councilor at large, people from the CDC, used to work for the CDC, people in housing currently. There were two or three people out of maybe the 10 or 12 letters, I didn't know who they were. Maybe they were residents, I doubt it. Um, there was a woman at the back of the room two weeks ago who stood up and said, there's community support, there's been community meetings. Well, in fact, there were two community meetings back to back on October 30th, the night before Halloween. Um, someone dropped off a flyer in my reception office about three or four days before. Tess Poe, she's a tenant across the street from me, and said there's going to be this meeting at the chamber. Well, the meeting at the chamber had CDAC, it had 
the architect, Clint from uh, Davis Architects in Cambridge. It had Joanne Campbell from the CDC, some guy, Bob something from Board 3, a, 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 a guy who was organizing the meeting, myself, the two owners of Roberto's, but really me and the two owners of Roberto's are the only sort of outsiders at this meeting. So I guess that counts as a meeting and community input, but we weren't really presenting, we were just sort of seeing this garish design being told, this is what's coming in your neighborhood. The following half hour later, there was a meeting over Bridge Street School that was also a community meeting. There were about 20 people there. I think there were three city councilors, the same lenders, the same CDC people, um, the architect. There were, there were probably around 20 people in the library at Bridge Street School. So this one in the back of the room two weeks ago said, oh yeah, there's a community meeting, community input. Mm, not really. It's really not it. So when I had to talk to someone at Keller Williams who's on the corner, two days ago, and they don't know this is going down. I haven't received notice of the planning board the joint meeting with the CBAC next week yet. I don't know. I don't know if the city has ever sent me notice that this is happening at all. And, and certainly the, the, the invitation to meetings hasn't been really soliciting community input. It's been to tell me what's happening, to warn me what's coming. There's a meeting tomorrow that conflicts with the city council meeting held by Tespo, a tenant in the McCarthy building across the street from the Unpleasant Street. Again, another presentation from the CDC. My understanding is to talk about landscaping. Well, there's very little landscaping room over there. And the site plan isn't approved, and the money isn't approved. It, it, it seems like they're having these sort of meetings, to say they had meetings, it's sort of a farce. Maybe it is a farce. So, if you are going to decide to spend public funds to back this, I would suggest you read the application carefully. And I would suggest if you are going to spend public monies on top of what's already been spent on a really expensive site to develop with lots of design challenges, some of which are even itemized in the application, I think you need to have some conditions. And again, maybe that's not the right term. I'm not completely well versed in how your committee works and the city works. There has to be genuine, legitimate, verifiable community input, not from Narkowitz, not from Wayne Feigen, not from Pat Goggins. How about from someone who's been on the corner for 14 years, who started a business from scratch with a small business association loan of $59,000 21 years ago, and now has 13 employees, and bought the building. I'm a neighbor. People at Carol Williams are neighbors. People across the street at Northampton Coffee are neighbors. People who live down on Valley Street, William Street, these people are all just hearing about it because some little state went on the ground like a week ago that said, oh, this is coming. Real input would have been way before the architectural monies were spent on that, that architect out in Eastern Mass. I really appreciate your listening to me. I appreciate your service to the community on this committee. But really, this committee is supposed to support community. That building doesn't fit. It's too big. It needs some significant changes. And if there's such a thing of, because you've gone ahead and proved the money, I don't know if that's the time to go there. I think it should have conditions that says there needs to be community input. We need to look at, do you just write a sentence that says, yep, and we're going to demo a building when everybody knows it's an old building or any architect should know? I think it goes back 150 years, Richard was just saying to me. How can we just swallow that? When the, the woman was here two weeks ago going, we need to get the mold out of the historic building down on Bridge Road. I mean, why do we fix one and tear one down without even questioning it? So I would urge you to do a little more research, be hesitant on your vote, and when you vote, know what you're voting for, or put some conditions on it. I really appreciate your listening and thinking about what I've said. Thank you. Any further comments? So hearing on the next item on our agenda is a request, which you received a letter in your packet about an extension, a request for an extension of the contract award for the Hampshire Council of Governments. I'm not sure how many of you were here for that award. Um, this was for repairs to the building. Um, the total price tag of the building was substantially more than our grant, and 
they were hoping to get contributions from other communities, um, which was slow and difficult going, and also to try to get some additional funding from uh, the state. So we have a letter asking for an extension from the expiration of the contract now to uh, September 1st, 2015. So is there a motion to approve that or to make that extension? Like motion. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Main seconded discussion. Have they gotten the money that they need, Sarah? Or is this why they're waiting? I didn't quite grasp that. The letter was very brief. They, <coughs> the CPA only funded a small portion, um, so I, I believe that they do have the money to to do that portion of the work, but they're waiting on a bond bill. To, to do and it's just the stair. Is that right? It is. Yes. But the stairs are part of the larger project as well. I thought there was more than just two. Oh, there's, yeah. Stairs there's a million dollars. Of, yeah. There's the stairs, there's the windows, there's significant structural issues. So when and I talked to you this afternoon, sir, you said that their contract already goes through September of 2015. Did I get that right? That, no, that's right. Um, the council order long predated that, so they may just not look at the data. But I didn't know. So, so this is a move? This is not so a they're requesting us to do something that they're already entitled to do, so I, it may be worth clarifying with them. We're not like they're looking at or if they want to do it differently. But can you also address, I couldn't make any details of their letter. It sounds like they already went out for bid and they got a bid saying that it was more expensive than the amount that we provided or the amount they have available. And so then they mentioned with the rebid, and it's not clear if the purpose of the rebid is to go out with a different package bid proposal for less work. No, they wanted to go out to, to bid with the exact same proposal and just bid more responsive. And hope that they get a cheaper bid. Yes. Yeah. So do we have to act on this if, in fact, the contract extends to the So I'll contact them and see. I'll contact them and see if we can, before our next meeting, determine what they were what they were using as their date. So yeah, the council resolution is dated May 17, 2012. So. So, moving on, we are going to go to consideration for our final uh, funding recommendations for round two, 2014. Um, so, we took a number of votes, which we all agreed were tentative and subject to adjustment at tonight's meeting. Um, so, the first thing I'd like to do is turn to the vote on the lumberyard project and so Marlene um, is going to I'm going to recuse myself from the, I received a notice from the planning board I didn't realize that I was considered an abutter but um, because when you look at the project the actual lumberyard store was further down and the land extends I guess within 300 feet so I received a letter from the planning board that mm -hmm. I uh, So that does mean the letters to the abutters have gone out for the planning board. Yep, um, I got, yeah, I received mine. I guess this speaker is exactly what we started with. So, um, so I would like to, um, because of that, we're going to take this on de novo. Okay, so from take this from scratch, um, ignore our consideration or leave, leave aside our consideration on last meeting um, and um, start for looking for a motion. Um, the requested amount is $500,000. So is 
put a motion to take action regarding that. Apart from where we were last okay. meeting, in order for us to begin the discussion. Mm -hmm. So I move we approve 300000 for the Second. Alright, discussion on the project. Just a review. We were informed at the last meeting that the proposed building is actually significantly smaller than what is allowed on that site by the planet, by the current zoning. Yes. Um, and I'm very sensitive to old buildings being torn down, but on inquiry I discovered that um, the building isn't considered central business district and therefore the city's um, demolition delay is not applicable uh, to that location. Really? Uh, because the demo delays are only applicable, the, the central business district is exempt from the, the um, Actions of the the, the, um, the historical commission, hmm. and um, in the, other than advisory, in, in, a, in a general sense, uh, but the, the demo delay is uh, is not applicable. So, um, not my doing. Um, <laughs> I would love to have that the central business district be under our purview. But it's not. Um, so it is under the, the, the purview of the Central Business Committee or Commission, whatever it is, um, that does have a, an architect that um, reviews it. Um, so I, from the historical commission's perspective, um, it is certainly, uh, we are, I'm sure, if we put or poll the members of our preference to have the older buildings incorporated into the into the design, um, but we don't actually have any power uh, to uh, to enforce that. Um, and I'm also again, mindful that um, the uh, the building could be far larger than it is, than the proposed building is. It is seven stories, if I recall. Seventy-five feet was the reference. Six foot. So what? No, no, the, the, the proposal is for five, for five, but the, no, no. I understood that the, it could be as large as seven by by current regulation. Is that, can you, Sarah, can you help me out? Seven stories, yeah. Oh, it's down could, for five, could but it could be seven. Well, that's, I'm going to need, 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 I'm going By that, I'm certainly not encouraging anyone to go to go higher. Uh, just uh, uh, remarking that uh, it is smaller than what's allowed. So this project hasn't been before planning board. Yeah. It has not been before planning board yet. And for the Northampton lodging, we held a joint planning board central architecture review committee meeting. The two two committees met jointly. So, what is the architecture review that is mentioned in the proposal? So it's not that committee's review. I, I presume there there is um, the central business architectural review process. So uh, I don't know if all who is on it, but um, Sarah probably does. It does require central business architecture review. I'm not sure if that's the same thing. Central Business Architectural Review. All I know is historical commission is not, not part of it, but, but uh, I don't quite know how the rest of it work. So it's the CBAC that has the purview over the demolition. They also have input when they meet with the planning board. That's why they're doing a joint meeting next week, is from what I can understand. My sure. comments refer to page two, which says in the application to your committee that a review has been done. The architects have reviewed the surrounding buildings and streetscape 
so that the new buildings will complement the surrounding neighborhood. And four, five, six, seven floors don't when, with that big footprint. That's the review I was talking about. Other comments? <coughs> well, I only, if you want me to speak, I mean, I. Yeah, I know you, you were talking about that. <laughs> That's referring to the architect looking at the neighborhood and looking at that the yes building is you know, about 45 feet tall. The you goes is a certain so that's what it's not a, it wasn't an, it's not an official review by the city. That was the architect looking in the community at the surrounding buildings and the so different the, heights like the buildings across the street and uh, that are about 38 or 40 feet tall. Mrs. Uh, Susan Hewitt's buildings. Um, and then I just say, we, we, around the historic thing, we do have to file because we're getting public funding um, with the Mass Historic Commission. So that will be filed. And so they will, they will look at the plans. And so even, even if the Central Business District, if there's a demolition delay, I didn't realize it was exempt, but we will be getting, um, we will be getting feedback from the Mass Historic Commission. And I would we say have to file. The public consumption, the Mass Historical Commission in Boston does receive comments and we'd be willing to we'd be willing to receive comments in relation Thank to you. any question of this type. It doesn't mean that they'll necessarily review in your favor, obviously, but they are a deliberative group. And your group receives comments on community. Okay. Pre com your group receives comments on community preservation of historic Northampton. So your argument that it doesn't fall under certain statutes and what have you is different than saying, as a committee. The your city, obligation to be, is to, inform, to preserve to inform the process. The city could, if it wanted, um, ask the historical commission, which works on its behalf, for advice on the on the, the project. Um, the other tool that the historical commission, the historical commission, has is the imposition of a demolition delay of a building up to 12 months from the application for, for that delay. And that is a, um, uh, that's a power of the commission that extends throughout the city, except for the central business system. Uh, David, the, uh, it's not that demolition delay doesn't apply within the central business district, it's that central business architecture committee administers demo delay. I misspoke. Thank you. That district. Thank you. It is a chronology issue. The Central Business Architecture Committee already had the power to review demolition prior to us doing the ordinance for demolition delay for the Historic Commission. So it's not like someone's turning a blind eye to the downtown district. It's just that a body, a permit granting authority body, already had demolition purview over the downtown properties. So it didn't make sense to have two bodies with that purview. Thank you. All right, so we're still back with this project. I'd like to take a few minutes to read what was submitted to us in writing since we got three pages and one is three pages the other. It's only fair to do that, but people are wanting to have.
Can I ask a question of the uh, of the uh, CDC folks? 
Um, what would be the implications of delaying a decision until our next round, which would be May or something? Um, would, would we heard focus we're looking to go in for funding in the February round at the Department of Housing and Community Development, and we need to have all our funding uh, lined up then. You know, I felt all along it's, that there's we've got two big housing projects going before us at the same time, and then going to the state. And I, I know that I have to look to the housing people to tell me that those two projects dovetail each other, that they're complementary, that there's not a downside to doing two big projects at the same time. But I, I, I'm. I can't make that judgment. I've got to do it from the, the housing people have to tell me that. And I, I feel like it is problematic. I, I really, between the two that we've dealt with here, and I've got a little more experience on the other one on Northampton Lodging because of the planning board work, but um, this one's feeling rough around the edges compared to that one. Now, I'm, the, the two projects are different, and there is a there's a housing project already there for the, for the Northampton and, and this is a very different project. So I, in some ways, it's not fair to compare them, but um, I, I just, I felt really great about the Northampton Lodging one. And, and we had to hear it twice and all of that, and it did go through as the paper bill that went through its reviews relatively. Uh, it's right next to a condo. Uh, there, were, there, there were not, there was not dissent over the, the neighbors to that building. I, I don't feel like we're, we're getting a full coverage from the neighborhood. Um, I, I don't. I, I appreciate people coming to tell us their opinion, but I'm, I'm taken by how limited the response is. I mean, by comparison, some of our projects fill the room, and so um, I, I'm just I'm grappling with this one now. It's really where I am. Um, I, I am not as happy with the design of the building as I was with the other one. Um, I think there is an argument to be made for how are we handling um, uh, air conditioning in the building and how are we you know, handling some of the project's limitations. Um, Next question. Joanna, well, the, the um, air conditioning question caught my eye. I'm I, uh, no expert on this, but it, it, it certainly does. I mean, we're at, we're at site plan, I mean, all the details. This is, you know, schematic design for the project. I mean, we expect to do mini split systems in there, which is, will provide air and, and heat. Uh, we, just, we just haven't got to that detail for the planning process yet because we're doing site plan and CBAC. Um, so you know, all the details of exactly how many units, I mean, there's the programming of the, the footprint is there, is that's what we're presenting. You know, there might be some tweaking of units inside uh, the building, and so we are expecting to do mini split systems there with photovoltaics on the, on the roof, leased system. So there, there would be an AC on the roof? Well, wouldn't be, no, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a, and I'm not a, I'm not an engineer, but it's a. There are these mini split systems that provide. Um, I mean, got part of it hanging up in. The in your in your unit, yeah. you've probably seen them around, yeah. and that provides. There's no duct work or anything. Uh, it's, ele it's electric. Is, the bottom line is there's no air conditioners hanging out the window. Correct. Right. right. Okay. That's very different. That was presented at the community meeting at Bridge Street School by the architect. So is that a definite, or if that were made a condition, is that a, is that a problem to you? Uh, well, I, well, I think it would, I'm just trying to think of, you know, we certainly don't want air conditions in the windows, so. Um, and I, I, I would imagine we don't really want 55 mini split systems on the roof either. I mean. Well, they would, that's part of the parapet would, the, the, the condenser systems would be sitting on the roof. That's, that's the alternative in, in a, in a uh, development we have in Parsons that we're building, which are 
um, two and three story buildings, those condensers are in the yards because it's a different, it's more of a suburban setting. In this situation, the mechanicals have to be on the, on the roof. Um, I've seen buildings and photographs of buildings in third world countries where every single office in, in a multi-story building has their own little mini split system condenser on the roof and it, it's, it's not only unsightly, it's also extremely um, energy inefficient. So I guess I was just asking... It's not like, energy. These are very efficient units. The, the, the parapet in the front, those we're, we're talking about is having the condensers behind that so they would be blocked from view. So, okay, unsightly in society, the question I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get at is, um, is there some way because I'm concerned with the city's greenness in general, not just uh, sightliness, but is there some way to um, kind of combine forces, I don't know what the right term is, but so that people are not plugging into 55 different units that are competing with each other to uh, each uh, dump their heat. Uh, the the, the, the mini-split systems are a sustainable mode of creating heat and air conditioning. I mean, it's so and we would make the units as efficient as possible inside so people are, the, the, the heating and the cooling is all, I mean, it's all designed by engineers to make it as efficient as, as possible. And the mini split system is a very efficient system that runs. So I don't understand what you mean about the plug-ins and, I mean, people, I don't, I'm not clear on that question. Well, my impression with the mini system is it's a regular air conditioner that you split in half and you put the condenser and, and up on the roof, and, and you put the you put the you know the other coil inside the inside That's the room with a fan in it, in, up in the, the, the high wall unit, and run two copper pipes between. Um, so I don't see how that's more. I mean, I'm not going to be I mean, combat or, or because I see a lot of I voted for this thing, but um, how is that more energy efficient than an air con regular hot wind window based air conditioner? I'm not an engineer, so I can't okay. answer that question. Um, but I know it. I know it is. <laughs> okay. From the engineer's perspective. Um, I actually have one at home, and it is. It, it, it's they are more efficient than an electric plug-in air conditioner in a window. Thank you. But um, but they are. I don't. I, I don't know if there might not truly be a question about putting them all together. They're going to have to be scaled in size to handle the units. I could see them putting a larger like a regular commercial building size condenser on the roof instead of, if you're thinking, 55 little ones. But, so I'm, I, I accept the answer that they're not at the phase of having all the systems oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, scaled or identified yet. I mean, I, I can accept that. Other comments? Okay. Can you respond to the concerns about um, lack of community input to the project? Sure. So, I mean, part of we as affordable housing, I mean, we look to a lot of the work that has gone before in the disabled Northampton or the housing production plan that the housing partnership works with. The housing partnership is made up of folks who are appointed by the city. Um, and we do have a number of people who supported the um, application when we put it in. Um, we, the, the site is a very tight site to design, and so we worked with our architects first to figure out where the building needs to be based on this, the, um, uh, the relocation of the stormwater system, trying to figure out what has to happen on Shore Street, whether Valley had any, whether the, the lumberyard has any rights to access the Shore Street, and we have to have commercial space both on Pleasant Street and on Holyoke Street in Central Business. So this, the, the design process, we are a private nonprofit, so we designed the building that would work for the program that we need to present, and then we did present that to, um, you know, we had this, this business meeting that Mary's referring to, and we had the community meeting. Um, at Bridge Street to, uh, School to show what we had designed to get some feedback um, on it and we hadn't yet finished out what we were doing on um, Short Street. Uh, we have been working with the city to get feedback from them about what 
they want here on the site as well in the sense of um, short street if it ever becomes a public street. Um, originally we had parking that ran along the railroad and down and on, not onto, but abutting short street. And the city gave us feedback, the planning department, that if that street ever becomes a public street, they don't want a parking lot on that street. So we then worked on redesigning that to be a park. So that's what we're, we're having a meeting tomorrow with, uh, with some of the abutters tomorrow night to present the, some of the changes that we've made. So, um, you know, it's, it has it been a broad public process. No, um, it is a, it's not a public design process like um, Pulaski Park would be. Um, this will be privately owned, and so we have to create what works for us first, and then there is certainly, we can take some comment, but we can't, with, in order to make the financing work and the number of units that we need, you know, it, if people say, well, they want to see, you know, 20 units there, that's not going to work for us financially. Um, so we do design what we need to see and then get some input. So maybe there'll be um, some input around you know, fencing or some things in the yard. So um, I think that's... Uh, How, while you're standing there, could you address the, the uh, concerns that were raised about traffic, the school bus traffic, and also potentially... Yeah, potential? there'll be no access. There's no, car, there's no car access on Short Street. So our attorney has taken a conservative view that uh, he's not saying we don't have any rights on Short Street. He's saying on a conservative view, we, probably, we might not have any uh, access to Short Street. So therefore, we're not creating any access. So all the, the, the parking and the access is all through Holyoke Street. So Short Street, um, the, the drawings that have been submitted to the city, will show that that is a, a park on that side with some fencing for protection, for, for safety, because there, there are cars that go in and out of there, but there'll be no car traffic into our site from there. It'll be pedestrian traffic with a small gate that goes in and out. So that section has a park there, and then the central uh, behind Amy Royal's building, um, there's also a, a park area there as well that are probably not as developed on your, that you had originally. Can I ask a question? How yes. big is the actual park areas? Because I know on one side, on the left-hand side, where the cars drive, the cars actually have to turn around yep. if they can't find a spot and go back out. I just don't see how there's all this room for a park. You say a park, and I think of like a park, like something for kids to play, especially, what is it, 50 sign units. I don't see a park there. I don't. Well, I, and on I, the other I, you know, I didn't bring anything with me. If someone, I could sort of. You know, if that's current at all. Yeah, I mean, I could. It's, it's the same. Because I haven't seen, like, I've seen some drawings and stuff. Yeah, but they're I on the seen, they're on the state the city's website. I I wasn't yeah. able to find them, but. Um, you don't mind if I can look at them? Imagine how the rest of us feel. But this, yeah, I. So here, so there'll be bollards here. So this is the park area here. Now it's more developed than it is now, but this is the area. So how are and the... And this is the park area here. How do the cars turn around? They will the just fill back up and turn around and come so back they have to. So if there's no spots here, like let's say this thing's packed up and it's all filled. So that car has to literally back up all the way out. No, 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 no. They'll they'll be able to turn around in the park. They'll be able to turn here. There's enough room for them to back up and turn back around. I'm supposed to be tossing to the kids. I don't, I don't see it. <laughs> I don't see it. So that's like a boulder. Because you have a... And the kids are going to be playing out in the car. There's a more developed it. site. Yeah, because they're supposed to drive around here. No, 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 no. no there's, that's no. what I saw. No, there's gonna there's bollards here. Is this here. the most? Sorry. This is not the most recent. No, what's what okay. has been presented? This is what I presented here a couple of weeks ago before we had a full set of drawings. So the. And you didn't bring the other drawings. So I did. Because to say, there will there will be. Oh no no I was just. I just want to I want to keep us going because we do have a long agenda. You have to consider this and then a number of other items. So. And you yeah, have I have a meeting with the butters tomorrow. Tomorrow night. Yeah. Okay. Um, I will say that since I mean to put it. In, context for the, the private development where the project comes before the planning board, the 
the abutters are notified. That's a process that the planning office mm -hmm. goes through. And then that is usually the first time that there is public input is when we're actually considering the design then. So in that context, we're we're earlier yes. than that. So so um, the activities that have gone around that are mm -hmm. to try to get it through this step of the process. Right. And it, other comments? Uh, I'm a little troubled that we have to go through this exercise again. We had such a robust discussion mm -hmm. about it before. I think it's like a rough day, so I guess I reference our meeting notes, which we've already heard are not regularly available. But yeah, I feel for the people who are here commenting about public process, we struggle with the same issues that you do. So your, your comments are not falling on deaf ears. With that said, we also have to make a decision based on the information that we have and recognizing that this is the first of many steps where your voice can be heard. We still have to make a decision. So you do have a planning board. You do have our recommendations go to city council. City council has to make the decision. So there are lots of rallying points, but I want to ask you, Joanne, you're hearing these comments. You've had a couple of meetings. I can't judge from, you know, it's he said, she said, or she said, she said in terms of whether that had enough advance warning or whether or not there was active participation. If we were to add a condition to require some additional public comment during the process, in addition to planning board, is that something that acceptable mm -hmm. to you? And the, we can design that in a way so that it's either more inclusive or provide enough advance notice that people can rally and come to you with their thoughts. Yes. And and then the other question is, in terms of the comments that you've received thus far, is there anything that you've heard that w would influence you to make changes to your design thus far, even if it's a subtle change? Are there things that you I, I haven't, other than it's too big, I haven't heard specific, and, and that is ugly. It's sort of some of the specifics. I mean, I have, you know, I have heard specifically from some other folks. We've been emailing, and we've had some meetings with folks who've contacted me. So we have had some conversations. Um, so yeah, if they're specific, I mean, I, I can't say that someone says make a three-story building, uh, but if, you know, we need a little more, we'd like a little bit more commercial space. Or, uh, so I mean, the other thing we have to be careful about is what the CBAC will say as far as design. So we sort of have to walk, it's, we, we alone are, can't make the design, um, I guess by community process, this is where I, you know, I, I struggle with is because the architect reads the, the design standards for the central business district um, and makes those design decisions and so then it would be hard to say, to meet with the community and, and be able to say, oh well, yeah, we're going to redesign this in this particular way when it might not meet the standards of CBAC. So I, I think maybe the CBAC planning board process is another way then the CBAC can react as well and say that wouldn't fly or we want you to do it this way and maybe that's so it's a little you know I struggle with knowing that we have to meet other other city standards so to me a fair enough caveat but my comments are to me, in terms of our priorities, affordable housing is probably, for me, the number one, because that's making sure people can afford to stay in this community that we love and encourage people to stay. We've got, you know, to me, that's above Blast Park or some of our other historic preservation projects or open space. We want people to feel as welcome here as, as we do. But I also feel like if we're going to be making choices between a project, I'm not sure that I can see the distinct differences between one, both of them are on Pleasant Street. The, the differences seem to be largely in terms of one is one bedroom, one serves families of different sizes, one's larger, one's smaller, there's a different uh, base of retail available, but there are similar price tags, there's similar footprints, what's 
good for one is good for the other, and what's bad for one seemingly is applicable down the street, you know, in terms of traffic, in terms of congestion. And I'm not saying I love these projects either. I think that there's a need for these projects, and we also have to recognize, like, every time we have this debate about should we be micromanaging the project, and we have debates about whether or not we should be requiring a conservation commission to allow trail access, and we point at each other saying we can't tell them what to do. Well, here we've got other boards, the planning board, that actually have the authority over some of these design decisions that we don't have any control over. If someone came to the city with a project, it was a private developer that had just wanted to put up commercial space, we wouldn't be having this discussion, and there wouldn't be any of the public input, the limited public input <clears throat> that there's been would be relegated to the planning board. But we don't have any control over those decisions. So I'm at a loss if we're going to choose. I'm not sure how to choose. Well, and so my my proposal the last time, I think, and can be remain the same, is that we fund them similarly, so we're not showing any bias as to one over another if it goes to the state. There are a lot more hoops, there are a lot more opportunities for public comment. It may be that nothing gets built, it may be that nothing gets funded, maybe that one does, or maybe that two does. And I feel the same way Devin has expressed, which is I know that one of these projects or both of these projects is going to have an effect downtown real in a way that we haven't imagined, and probably in ways that we have imagined, but I don't know how to control it, and I also don't feel like saying no either of them because I feel they're similarly situated. Well, and just to add a, a comment about your planning board, if, if a planning board decides that private developer came into this lot and built the 70-foot building that could be zoned to do so, you, that's what the zoning allows. So you can, you can uh, counter them on certain things about traffic mitigation and uh, landscaping and the sort of softer aspects of the design, but the, the zoning is what is dictating the size of the building. My, my only comment is that I just want to, what I said, what I've said before, is that these are two projects, these are two new buildings, but one is actually just a replacement of existing housing. So in terms of capacity for community housing, this is really one new project. Um, and, and again, I think that because this is, we're recommending public money be invested, this is a potential um, you know, point of conditioning, but at the same time, were we to require meetings, I'm not sure, uh, you know, that might be good to allow the developer to hear input on what's potentially going to be built there. At the same time, we would then, I don't know that we would retain the power to say no or yes or modify because there is a complex process on how these things are supposed to be built um, that may not be in keeping with what some of the neighbors or some of the residents of the city would like to see built. Um, in this case, we've got the independent check of some of this architecture, we've got planning board, and we also have DHCD, which has to decide whether to invest a much larger amount of money in a project that they want to see succeed. So you know, I, I think both of these projects um, deserve funding, and I, I hope that both of them are built. I hope that in the process, um, design process, that the building becomes something that people are pleased with in the city. To your point from the public meeting, I think my hope is the same as yours, which is that at least people can feel that their voices are heard in the design of these buildings. Not that we retain jurisdiction over that, but that we have some um, acknowledgement and guarantee that that process is as open as it can be, recognizing constraints that you have to satisfy other boards, that people feel a genuine opportunity to participate as opposed to feeling slighted. I'm not making a judgment about what has happened, but going forward to ensure that that opportunity is there, because it does affect a large portion of that downtown area. I think the example tonight from Short Street being misunderstood as to whether it's access or not is a, is a good point in fact that, that could get handled in that method. Okay, so additional additional comment? I mean, do we want to add that, do we want to add any potential conditions at this point to the motion that's on the table? I mean, require, well, um, requiring, you know, requiring meetings with the community um, is something we've done before with other projects. Again, not to give 
the public the illusion that you know, it's, it's a meeting for input and that the real the real decision points past this committee are at the city council and then in planning board and central business architecture. But it would be an opportunity for the developer to meet with the community, um, and that's something that we have done in the past with other projects that have wide public impact. So we want there a suggestion that we add. Well, the added condition. I mean, the applicants seem very open, and I appreciate it to um, roof mounted uh, cooling units of whatever type, and I would like to make that a condition. I, I think that's, I, I disagree. I think that's really micromanaging something that most of us don't know enough about. I cannot vote on cooling on the roof. I just feel that that's above and beyond. Yeah. Pre President wise, we've certainly been involved in, and have issued um, conditions of at least that, um, that side of you know, Bridge Street Pool and um, uh, Playground. We, talking about snow, you know, where snow will be dumped and that kind of thing. So we we have um, we have frequently um, not to come to history, obviously, but we frequently touched on technical aspects, especially if they had a public appearance. Um, but uh, in that respect, the position. So you wish to suggest it and we could vote on it, or do you want to hold I mean, I think that, again, that's one of the things that I think is, rises to a level of uh, our supervision. And also, since there are other standards that the developer has to take into account in terms of energy efficiency standards from the state, energy, energy code for the city, uh, that we would be dictating something that might not make sense from a design. I mean, if you put in a central system, then you have to manage the system centrally. I mean, then we're saying, do you want to have a central control? I wasn't, I wasn't dictating the particular type. I'm saying of some sort of non, non window mounted. We need the solution up to the, up to the petitioner. But I certainly, I didn't, and I appreciate it again, I didn't hear any opposition to that. And But it does make a significant difference as far as uh, appearance within the community. And I think it's entirely reasonable for us as a as an organization to, to be mindful of the green the greenness of, of new construction that we're that we're supporting. Okay. Um, what I'd like to do since I also think that goes too far, I'd like to see if we can get a second for it as an amendment to the motion and then have a vote on it since I don't think there's at least two of the five people are there's not consensus. Okay, so all in favor of adding the condition on window-mounted air conditioners being avoided in the design of the building. Okay, opposed? All right. So, um, we will go forward. Any other conditions? I'd like to retain the condition that we had, or that we had regarding the number or percentage of units that will be maintained as affordable for residential units. So this is 100% of the units at less than 60% in line. I believe that was the, yeah, so. All right, so those are two conditions. Any additional conditions? All right, are we ready to vote? All in favor of the $300,000 recommendation with the condition to hold a public meeting with um, due notice to residents discuss design of the building and also the condition that 100 percent of the units in the building will be maintained at less than or available to residents making less than 60 percent area median income in favor opposed okay five zero all right so I think we can move through this then um, resolution by resolution. And again, we can open these up for discussion and modification of our previous uh, votes. Um, and we go to the Valley CC Lumberyard resolution. Can we just clarify the language? It's, it's usually 60% or less, not less than 60%? Oh, so yes. 60, okay. yeah, inclusive. Okay. Inclusive. Um, so we have the resolution in front of us, um, whereas 
with ICDC, submit an application for Community Preservation Act funding for an Northampton Lumber Yard Affordable Housing Project. Um, the next paragraph is, uh, it says 60 units, and I think probably it's safer there to say approximately 54. Just because that number may be modified. Um, the units will be a mix of one, two, and three bedroom apartments restricted to households earning at or below, and I think we just need to say at or below 60% of area median income. Hey, can I, can I ask a question? Does, does the area median income capture the, the intent of what we're trying to do here? Is that, I mean, it, 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 I'm not in the field, so I'm not sure what that actually amounts to, but I just want to make sure it's, that it's an index that is me as meaningful as people think it is. It's required by the funding source. That's so it's not even a question. Okay. So Sarah, it's getting rid of or less at, the six, at, at or below 60%. Or, yeah, I should just say earning, earning 60% or less of. And we need to add a whereas condition for the meeting with a public meeting to be held. That's there, isn't it? No. Shuffle at least one public meeting. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I well, did the other direction. I think that's it. One more question. Is is there would there be any value to having a, some a representative of the central business district attend tomorrow night's meeting? I'm not sure that they're allowed to. That'd probably be weird. Yeah. If they could as far as open meeting a lot. Like, they wouldn't really be able to take the comments back. Is it open meeting? Yeah, I, when we first had our tech review with the city, I, I asked the chair of the CBA, of the CBAC, after the meeting whether she could meet with us to give us some input, and she said, I can't. So I don't know if this would, again, I'm not a, I'm not it's, sure that she'd be able to say clear, anything. Could you make clear to the audience at tomorrow night's meeting? How to be in touch with the central business district? Uh, I would need to just just pull the plan. That. that would be through town. I'm going. I'll do it. Thank okay. you. I just want to make sure stakeholders in the neighborhood know who to talk to and bring their opinion to. I think that's only fair. And the Bridge Street School neighborhood meeting was Ward Three, and so yeah. All right, is there a motion to approve the resolution as amended? Yeah, can we do it? Okay. Can we get down to the public meeting provision? And I just want to change that to required city hearings. And the question that remains is the manner in which the uh, meeting was announced and, to, and how to distribute that. And then there, you know, it opened up a little bit of a doors box about how we do that, but I think that's important. Limited public comment we've heard is that it wasn't sufficient in terms of time. So I don't know if we put in a, a qualifier for the amount of days notice or the manner in which it's advertised for the resolution. I'm not sure what the best process is. But I feel like if we don't say something, then we may end up with a repeat of the same criticism or concerns. Chairman? So, you know, I just say that Ward 3 Neighborhood Association has been working with us and they helped organize those two meetings, so I don't know if that would be an avenue. Um, I don't know, Mary, if that would be acceptable to have the Ward 3 Neighborhood Association call an addition, we're talking about an additional meeting to tomorrow night. Yeah. That's limited to property abutters and business owners. So. I think it's hard for me to answer that because the issues are huge. You know, you'd say someone, we're having a meeting. There's no agenda, there's no information to prep for it. 
you know, it's three days ahead of time. And I do think the input so far has fallen on deaf ears or has been wiggled about. In that Freight Street meeting, we talked about window units with the architect, and now we come back and talk about split units. And You can say you can have all the input you want, but it doesn't say they have to act on the input. And she basically said we're not going to act on the input. So I'm feeling a little pessimistic. It seems like a week's notice is reasonable. It seems like something in the paper is reasonable. The Ward 3 Association is a good communication vehicle. Well, but it does feel like we're just going to be talked to and be told why it can't be what we want it to be. I guess we try. So, I would mean if you can say the agenda shall be published. Uh, how about at least 15 calendar days? And to solicit public input and respond to questions. Thank you. And then the, the remainder would be where to, you know, I don't know that a legal notice in the newspaper is going to get any to it. can be posted outside the property. Well, we can do something through a, through a means reasonably calculated to reach a broad audience. <laughs> we do well, have a federal Yeah. And that's good enough. Additional changes before we vote. I'll just put a comment after hearing. Yeah. All right, motion to approve this as amended. Move. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? Moving on to the next uh, resolution to look at would be Sawmill Hills. Um, we put If we went to historic Manhattan, we might all die. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you're right, they're the six that are on. So I mean we'll just just I want to give us a sense we'll blow the um, so uh, this is a land acquisition um, of a parcel that has road access um, potential conditions. I'm working on my memory here. Of marking of the property boundaries. There, there's, there's some things that, that have not been happening for land acquisitions, and we were in discussion about needing to catch up on. And I believe it was marking. Uh, yes, and that is one of the. That was the sawmill survey. That was part of that. Um, Dave and I were just in the woods the other day, and we saw lovely copy markers. But this was at this Joe Lake, um, the Broad Brook, where it's been served. They're doing a comprehensive survey. So that's really what's going to drive it. I'm not sure I want to stop the train here, but I just, it's the time to mention is there something we want to make sure is done here to mark the property once we get it? Or is it, and, and is it contiguous with some other properties? And so we, we can. Sir, do you know, I mean, this, I'm assuming that the soft cost will encompass a survey for this parcel? Or are we uh, just going to take it as described because it abuts back now? The survey. It's the survey. In the I believe that the sum of the survey covered this parcel because we were immediately able to acquire it. So, 
And so, and it does um, abut adjacent conservation. Okay. So, so, so there's less more. Fun. Yes. Yes. So, so we should have it marked appropriately. Um, the only other potential condition might be uh, parking, um, because if, as we heard, um, parking along that portion of the road is discouraged and even ticketed. And so, if you, and I and I believe there's an area that might be amenable. Sarah, is that correct? The front that of the parcel that would not have wetland permitting issues. Okay. So. Um, <coughs> So what kind of precise wording do you want to leave? Some discretion to the conservation area, the conservation commission. Do you want to specify a number of spaces? I mean, how would you? I mean, that's going to incur a cost. How would you do that? Um, I think that you would have to use some of the conservation fund. Yeah. So whatever you know, whatever money we had, we'd have to get you know, trap rock gravel in like a small parking area. Coles Meadow Road was trail access, was that a marked trail be developed on Road. But I don't know that we required parking. We didn't. I remember we didn't. So, but in this, in this instance, we don't have an issue where developing parking would create an impact that we have, there would be a regulation. Okay, so. Um, whereas the Conservation Commission will develop a parking area to serve users of here, serve users of the uh, Sawmill Hills trail network. Yeah, and I think with that, I think part of the marketing for this parcel is that it had its own trail system that mm -hmm. would connect to other existing trails. Right, that's what I say, so that, but so, but not only is it to serve users, but to in the parking lot or elsewhere, describe where those trails are. Is that reasonable, Sarah? I mean, is there, there's money for a parking lot and a kiosk or whatever. The, the parking sign. area essentially already exists, so that's not an issue, and a sign was definitely planned anyway. Thank you. Okay. Any further conditions? All right, is there a motion to approve this as amended? Um, Dave, second. Second. All in favor? Kevin, let's get back to Northampton. Historic. Um, historic Northampton. So, Historic Northampton presented to us a breakdown of what their latest priorities are, given that they are um, completing work, even as we speak. Um, and so, Again, since our vote the last time was open to amendment, it's there, I guess, a, we want to revisit, we want to revisit the amount of the reward do we want, or, or the award recognition do we want to add additional conditions as to what work, uh, what work will be completed. The amount is the same, correct? Um, 
my concern was, you know, I'm reading here about the structural problems with the Damon House. That actually seems pretty important if you have subsidence of an inch and three quarters and you're having concerns about choice, but you're not able to investigate it because you've got things stored there. My initial reaction, again, I don't want to micromanage, but I'm just trying to figure this out before we give you the money, is, you know, would it make sense to get that stuff out of there in a safe place to make sure that those historic materials are secured, allow you to figure out whether or not the problems with Damon change your priorities and do that sooner than later? And that's really where I was having trouble kind of, I can see Parsons get that done. Right, that makes sense. Yeah. But if there's a structural problem with Damon that's going to cost a whole lot of money that nobody has, and we're putting money in the windows for Damon, oh, that, that the is under. not a low priority. The windows are not yeah. a low priority. Um, when we, when I realized how bad they were, and I had Chris, come, Chris Thompson come over and look at them, he just went, "They've got to come out of here." And it's like within 24 hours, they've gone. They're they're really bad. Um, it, it is a high priority, and it, ha it has been compromising the collections. All the collections that are on the second floor, as opposed to the basement, are, are in trouble. So much dirt that comes through. So, I, the idea of trying to rush to move the collections out and not through the windows, you know, um, you know unless you would like to add another you know, $25,000 to the grant, I'd be happy to <laughs> have you have that and, and, well, and move this is where I, No, yeah. I'm not a historic expert. I, 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 I'm, got, I'm sitting here listening to this. I, I've got to say, I just sat here and, and listened to the fact that my the proposal that concerned the public appearance of a new building was micromanaging, and now we're, we're talking about whether the sequence with which you move items in, in, in the basement of the thing is, is the right sequence. I, I can't imagine more micromanaging than that. Um, I, not, I, I see that with great respect and fondness. Um, but I'm asking the historic expert. We didn't have an expert on air conditioning. I don't care whether you're <laughs> micromanaging or not. I consider you um, to be people who are trying to help but you, you have a, board a difficult and decision. Of, of experts, and they guide you. You respond to your board of experts at Historic Northampton, correct? Uh, I'm sorry, you respond I, to your board of directors at Historic Northampton. Yes. And that board consists of antiquarian librarians. It consists. Yeah, they they listen to what I mean. Mostly they listen to what I what I suggest that they do, because because I am more I have worked more in my life with objects than they have. It's a really different thing um, between being a historian who's trained in documents and they know and love history and really care about it and a person who actually understands how to care for objects. So, um, but I do have at least one person, um, that Nan Wolverton, who is, um, okay. you know. And on that note, I, I, I can't see any problem with making them responsible for the content, you know, for the collection. That, I just I'm, just, I'm not sure it can be done much faster than we can do it. Um, I mean, I, I'm not going to, I can't move those collections before Christmas. I just can't do that, um, and I can't. I couldn't get it organized to know where to move them. But by January, I will have a place in Parsons to put them. So, uh, to me, it sort of like throws it all into turmoil, and it would make me start over to try to figure out what to do. Whereas right now, I know I know what I'm trying to do, and and. And I know mm -hmm. that if I can get the, the, the Parsons needs to be cleaned up to save the house because it's there's so much mold in it. So are we trying to save the houses or are we trying to, trying to save the collections and do we prioritize one or the other? That's the well, question that I'm asking. And also I think part of the confusion, I and mean, I don't think micromanaging to ask the question, but this whole process is pitched as houses that are falling apart and collections that are suffering because there's mold and there's intrusion. They're both valuable for different reasons. Mm -hmm. The collections seem, in some respects, to be getting the short trip because they're getting moved from place to place. I'm just saying, maybe there's a way that we can have them in a secure place so we don't have to worry about them deteriorating while we're fixing that. Yeah. And see if there's a way to figure it out. Because otherwise, I feel like 
we're getting rid of the mold at Parsons, but we're taking the potentially moldy collection and putting it back in Parsons after we've remediated the mold. Mm -hmm. to me, that's the they're not unrelated, that. obviously, as you know, um, because yeah. they're, they're molding because of the condition of the building. Right. And then when the building condition improves, then the, then the collection will be protected. So that's why I'm coming back to you. So, yeah. And I appreciate I, your perspective. Now I'm coming back to you as the historic person. Knowing what's in their collection, do you have a problem with them being maintained in Damon House while Parsons is done? And no. then after Parsons, it goes in. Because a, a lot of the what was maintaining the moisture in the basement was a large collection of junk, some of which was porous and, and maintained moisture. And a lot of that junk has now been taken out and does not have that sponge, mossy-like quality of, of retaining moisture down in the basement that, that it had prior to uh, to that cleaning. Is that a fair way to describe it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, by the, the end of the... The junk that was down there was keeping the moisture okay, down. Wait, we've got now a container. Now you have is you know from 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 me to you and six feet high full of what came out of the basement. Well, simple, I, I you know I think that it is it's you know you bet to all worlds that would be a air conditioned uh, dry uh, trailer and, and temperature controlled trailer units that we brought on site and maintain um, a good environment. I mean, insurance a good museum would have the money to do that. This is. This quite a is so unendowed uh, that I think that this is a uh, this is a good workaround. Um, it's temporary. When the buildings are, are buttoned up, then the mold will evaporate um, and um, and will be safe. So I and and you you know the the, uh, the current leadership of the um, start from Northampton I think has has things under control. I'm very impressed with what's happening. So I have a question about, um, so a significant portion of the budget is is improvement of the basement. So this is over and above. Um, we funded for the Community Music Center at the Old South Street School basically waterproofing the basement to prevent water intrusion because that damages the building mm -hmm. structurally and it will damage the collections. But here, I'm just wondering what is the advantage of having a wide open space that you could store things where they would be accessible and where you could have one or, or two or three dehumidifiers running, dehumidifying the whole space. And it seems like you're going to go from that em empty basement and you're going to build, you know, to the extent that you're spending money on building stud walls and painting walls, um, which is, look, you know, the electrical looks like approximately, well, over $10,000. And then you're going to build these smaller spaces, which, you know, have the potential. What, what do you mean, building smaller spaces? Well, I'm not sure. I mean, is this is this just? Are you just going to have one large basement area in, in when you're done in Parsons, or is it? It sounds like you're doing significant improvement over and above just putting in the slab, because the slab is a different part of the project, right? Backfill is dig full depth foundation and basement slab, backfill to grade. But then there's $25,000 that is to empty the basement, build stud walls, electrical, insulate, sheetrock, paint walls, paint for them. I'm just trying to understand what, yeah, where you're going. So, so I'm relying in part on the advice from Chris Thompson. And so I hope I can express this mm -hmm. accurately. What's in there now, I mean, this, ignoring the junk, just the structure, is a cement block basement with fiberglass in the ceiling of the basement. And what he said was, that's sort of the point at which your weather seal happens. Um, the weather envelope, where do you put the insulation in? And if we bring it down to the sides, that brings the basement into the, the sort of usable area of the house and makes it much more flexible and we would be able to store um, collections in that clean space and we would be able to keep it clean and um, and have a much more easily controlled environment. That was the goal. So that then, instead of Parsons basement just accumulating junk because it wasn't really designed very well to begin with for collection storage, we would be able to start moving things in there that were um, you know, just that we wanted to save. So without the benefit of the plant, this is exterior. This is basically the exterior of the building envelope. So you're basically 
going to build a vapor barrier between the foundation and the interior space. Yes. We're not we're not talking about a, a build a space build out in, in the smaller rooms inside that interior space. No, the the, the place the there is a the basement as it exists now has three areas, right. um, and the largest of them I call, usually refer to as the 1981 basement. That one would simply be extended, and I assume that the, the dividing wall would be removed so that we would have a larger L-shaped space that would then um, extend under the kitchen and, and the, uh, the L. So that the whole, yes, the whole building is supported, but we would also have that space as a place um, to store things. And if it, if it were all, if it were clean. And we had, for example, what was down there were platforms that were used for a silk exhibit, you know, all set up with plexi trunks, and it was very elaborate, expensive setup for an exhibition. Um, we had to saw them up and get rid of them. They they weren't usable. It was just money down the drain, and there's no other place to put that. I mean, the, where to put even even a second collections objects? The the exhibit, what I'll call exhibit furniture, platforms and things that have to change for different exhibits is becoming a big problem. If you want to see different kinds of thing, uh, collections and exhibitions, then you end up having to have supplies like that. And we just don't, you know, it's stuck in between the collections and it's, it's a mess. So having that little L, which would be relatively narrow, as a place with a bulkhead where we could get things in and out, um, with that would that would just unblock all sorts of places. Mm -hmm. My last question is just that knowing that Damon was in good repair, was Damon House was Damon House was cleaned out, it was, you know, had working dehumidifiers. I'm wondering, um, in the short term, I, I believe the organization has seen the toll that it takes to not maintain those humidifiers. I mean it damage it damages irreplaceable artifacts. Going forward, is there any consideration to using some of the property to have a structure that is climate controlled that's above ground. Because it just seems to me that putting stuff below ground in Ward 3 where the soils are saturated for much of the year is sooner or later the dehumidifiers are not going to get empty or they're going to break and you just place, you're just basically placing your, even you know a flood event, it's you're placing yourself in jeopardy by having these collections below ground level. And I don't know whether the board has given any thought, you know, going forward as to finding, a, you know, obviously you're talking about moving it is difficult and that, you know, because you're trying to keep them all there at once, but going forward, thinking about how you can store the collection in a, in a more fail-safe place. Many, many proposals have been made over the years to do a, uh, a museum building that basically extended back from Damon and in that far left corner of the mm -hmm. property. And... Um, ever, so certainly, you are not the first person to have had this thought, um, but nobody ever was able to um, raise the money for it. Um, they had at one point a consultant come and talk about whether it was possible to raise the money. And right now, I have to be—I have to get to the point where I can balance an operating budget um, and and fix all this sort of thing just to get into the position where we can think of asking. Um, that requires support from the town that we have to be in a position to ask for. So I'm juggling. What you hear um, is the part about the physical buildings. But what I have to deal with is also our public face, our programs, um, you know, our building connections with the schools, all the kinds of things that ordinary people you're kind of a very select group that you know all the really dirty nitty gritty that we're dealing with here. Um, but for other people, they just we don't exist unless we're doing programs and exhibitions. So we also have to do that. Um, Nancy, is there, excuse me for interrupting, but is, uh, there are a number of small museums in in New England, even quite a number, um, and they all have vulnerable. Um, collections. A few of them have appropriate storage space, but it's always a it's always an effort, isn't it? I mean, is there uh, there must have been 
thought given to some sort of collaborative storage effort, some sort of a way to uh, not have to build multi-million dollar highly finished museum wings in order to store things, but instead to have uh, secure um, you know, butler building type uh, storage that would uh, um, that museums all over the area could subscribe to, just, you know, the way. I don't know. Um, you know, I came back to this job um, not having done museum work for some time. Yeah. And so I don't know what might be, people might be thinking about it. Does that make sense to you, though? Um, it does if there's funding for it. Um, oh. But, you know, most, of, most small museums are having trouble. They're historic houses. And it's hard to get people to support them and not to take them for granted. Yeah. In, in terms of the storage in our houses, I mean, Damon House is absolutely, the whole first and second floor are full to the gills. We can barely move. And the part of my, one of my many jobs is to reorganize that space. Parsons is not as full. There are a couple of rooms that we could keep some collections on the first and second floor once it's cleaned up. But I would like to open it up so that people could enjoy it, so that we're not just using our houses for storage. I think we ought to yeah. consider the project that's being proposed and stop it. Well, it's been oh, having discussions. No, no, it, 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 just, it, it, it gives me. Um, I, I'm happy to hear that they're thinking about getting the collection out because I think that's a long-term okay. disaster waiting to happen. And you know, and again, we when people present projects to us, sometimes we say, "Oh, it sounds like you also have this." project that should be. Well, we'd be glad to come back and bring that project. Absolutely. I'll be glad to come back with, you know, a multi-million dollar project <laughs> that will keep them all oh, safe. Do. Yeah. And, and, but, uh, meantime, meantime, meantime. Meantime. Yeah, and we, but before we do that, we want to wipe the mold right. off the stuff that's there. Yeah. So, uh, so lo logistical Dick. question. Um, CPA funds won't be available until February, and they, they are not, they can't be used to reimburse for work that's already been done. Are all of these items things that can wait until then? Um, yes, they would have to wait. I mean, I'm, I, the, the purchase, for example, of stuff to clean the basement is something that I have already done and was not on that grant proposal. So the things that we're working on right now are, are things that we're paying for ourselves. Okay. Um, I would like a motion. Yes. To approve the proposal, modest proposal before it. To uh, that will uh, accomplish a great deal of very low cost to the city. So we've already, so we don't have to do that, because I was going to say we've already approved the proposal for the amount. Okay. So we're just, we can oh, just as, as revised. So right. well, so what we're going to do is all we need to do is revise the resolution that's before us. So Sarah, could you put the resolution up? Uh, the resolution, as currently formulated, is funding to restore, renovate, and stabilize uh, basements and. Foundations. Um, I think we need to add <coughs> windows. And I think that protect artifacts would also be, since some of the work clearly seems aimed at protecting the artifacts in the building either indirectly or directly. And I don't know if we want to call out, should we call it specifically that all of it has to be done in keeping with the Secretary of Interior's standards for rehabilitation? Because that is, that is something that you'll have to, um, the DAR house did their windows, they put them on the inside, and I've, I've heard your rationale for putting them on the outside, but it just does, ha it does have to be, for CPA to be CPA eligible, it does have to be consistent with and Secretary is that all right, can we be sure that we are doing that if we have received historical commission approval? Or are there two different levels here? It was a, it's one more time. Uh, it, we've gotten the historic commission's approval for each of these things we're trying to do. Does their approval meet that standard that you're talking about? I, I would think that Chris can help you out with that because he has a lot of experience in yeah. this area. He's, he knows what the secretary's standards are. Okay. But, but no, it's a separate process. Okay. Yeah. In, in, in other projects, there have, you know, organizations have hired somebody who is familiar with working, you know, with work according to those standards. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, and it, it depends on the conditions. If the windows are completely falling apart, then replacement is, 
sometimes acceptable. So it's, again, it depends on the conditions on the site as to what your options are. And does some outside person have to be paid to make that assessment, or can we make that assessment based on, I mean, we're, we're reconditioning existing windows at the moment. We're not replacing. Yes, it's up to well, the between, that's between the expertise that's already on the historical commission and, and witnesses that we could have to join us, we could render an opinion to this body uh, as a condition of, of this grant. Could you state that again so I understand? The historical commission, between the expertise already on the commission and witnesses that we might have to present to us on this topic, could render an opinion to this body that would be a, that would fulfill a condition of, uh, of this of this grant. In other words, that this this commission wants to ensure that everything is is done quite well, and. You, understandably enough, don't really want to spend a hundred thousand dollars getting that opinion. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So there is a city commission that, that filled with people with expertise that can render that to you for free. And I'm simply suggesting that that you come to an historical to the Northampton Historical Commission with all of the the fine details of this. Of, of the everything that's going to be visible from the street, especially, or visible from the exterior, and um, uh, with Chris, with anyone else that can contribute their their knowledge, and um, and the historical commission will then render an opinion to yep. the um, uh, CPC. Okay. And that's so, acceptable. Yeah, that's fine. And I agree, and that was my question. I was going to ask because there's a portion in here that says that the, whether or not if some of these windows need to be replaced as opposed to repaired, we won't know until we actually take them out and look at them. And so in other circumstances, Forbes Library and others, we really put folks to the ring because they hadn't gone to a historical commission first to talk about, you know, should it be an interior storm, exterior storm, what does it do to the facade, or what does it do to the historic you know, situation. We, we so that. that is a perfect go through that saves you time and money and has the stamp of approval of the storage commission. I think that works well for my concern. Okay. So, uh, David, I'm going to say that you made the motion to um, approve this as amended. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Okay, second by David. All right, any further discussion? All in favor? Okay, that's the end. Okay. Thank you. And I, I don't have your, any of your emails, um, but I had hoped to be able to invite you to the open house we're having on Saturday from 2 to 4. This is one of those things where you, at, where you hit us up to contribute? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to add that. Are you recommending it? Yeah, I, I just had suspicions. Uh, we're opening to these two exhibitions. One is on Pro Brush, the whole Pro Brush um, factory. It's really wonderful. The other one is brings out a lot of the toys and children's things from our collections, and uh, and we'll do a, a few of the slides you've already yeah. seen um, about what our plans are. And, you know. Can we send that information to Sarah? Yes, and she'll distribute it. Okay. And we get a special tour of the basement if we come. I, oh, yeah, I, I, as long as it's I, I, at, I, I, after the main event, yes. <laughs> I, I'm happy to take any of you through there. I mean, you, you know the worst about us. Will you wear that dress again in the collection? The moon suit. Oh. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> All right. Is that the, the, the winter open house, you know? Yes. All right. And on we plunge to Pomeroy Terrace. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. So, Pomeroy Terrace, this is a... Can I ask a procedural question? Yes, Fred, certainly. You probably recall my name's Fred Zinnock. Indeed. I was here last time, and uh, I wanted to hear what you were going to say about Bridge Street Cemetery. But wait a minute, hang on. And um, you were talking to that camera back there, and then you mentioned that uh, you may go to 1 a.m. So I figured, well, I don't have to stay to the bitter end. I can call NCTV and ask them for the video, uh, which I did, and they never recorded anything. So if I wanted to see the decisions that you make tonight, can I see them in NCTV, or can I get them from Sarah? They should be 
available on NCTV, although they should have been last time too, so I'm not sure. Yeah. But, but I can give you the, the written uh, record of that. Okay, you can email me? Yeah. Sometime before next Tuesday? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Fred, I'll double check for you to see the P. Did you have trouble getting past the LED? It's recording. There's a red dot, so it should be. Okay, thank you. Do you have a right hand? I don't, but I need to see All right, Pomeroy Terrace. This is completion of a listing on the National Register of Historic Places. And Partially completed earlier and now recommending $4,375 to pay for our staff time from the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Um, is there any changes that we would like to make to this? Is there a motion to move by David? All right, any discussion on this? All in favor? Aye. Thank you. So the Seth Thomas clock this and this area is the one that needs to change to the actual purchase price. So the 4375 in that third paragraph. Yep. Change. Um, so this is funding the purchase, not the restoration. Um, the only cons I considered adding a condition about storage, appropriate storage. And so we would be ashamed to spend twenty thousand good twenty thousand dollars. We should put um, a condition that the city store it in a dry and secure spot. Because otherwise, basically, the city. DPW garage doesn't, doesn't no. do it for you? I don't know. Not, well, it's just like the fountain elements. That this is city money, and we can't be spending $20,000 on an old broken clock. I mean, that. that <laughs> never works, you know. um, so, uh, unless it really is uh, headed to a restoration and replacement. So, we can store it in a manner that preserves it prior to its future restoration. Secures it. Yeah. Preserves and secures. And further, the city um, um, takes steps to um, uh, finalize into a foundation um, infrastructure for supporting the clock installation in the future. So, in other words, making sure that uh, there's the right spot for it and uh, that it can be uh, uh, so that if if and when. You know, ten thousand dollars can be found to to uh, restore it. That it will uh, there won't be any problems uh, getting it in place and, 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 and uh, getting it going. Because we don't know where that is yet. I thought it was I thought it was Glasky Park, but I just I, that might just simply mean making sure that there's a block of concrete, you know, wherever it is that it's going to go after they, you know, while they build Glasky Park. Do we want to make sure? I mean, so here's a question. Do we need a historic preservation restriction. restriction on it and also make sure that it's installed on public property as opposed to get sold for uh, that kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, right, this, exactly. This is what bothered me, and I think I was the only one to vote against it. We're, yes. we're purchasing a clock, there's no money to restore it, and there's no place to put it. And until those two things are resolved, I will vote against it. I mean, those to, to is twenty thousand dollars is a lot for a clock that's not restored with no place to go. It does not seem at this point an appropriate use of our money. And we can say until it, until it is restored, but we don't have the money to do it. And there's no place to go. It was not going to look park. I mean uh glass. I don't think anyone had said where it was going. They did say glass. We just have not for money for glass. Yeah. So who said glass? I, I guess you said glass. Jim came in and said, I thought the Plasky Park plan had no clock in it. Well, we haven't seen the plan for Plasky Park. Oh, no. 
plan. I mean, we have a we have a commitment from the planning department that that's the intended location. Well, can we say whereas the clock will be installed in a highly visible public location? Yeah. And at least the council then has said that. So they try they try to tuck it away in the industrial park. David, what was the other thing? That is visibility and storage. security during storage. Security during storage was their third. Oh, let's see. location in downtown. Okay. I mean, the only thing, right, is that we, is that we did not fund, I mean, they asked for the restoration money. But right. my hope was that having the clock, now this would provide an incentive for those who wish to see this restored to actually contribute something towards restoration. It, it, it provides, point, some, provides some leverage. I'm sorry. Uh, I was just going to say, you, you pointed, I think, it, it, well, taken in general. This clock does have a particular history with downtown Northampton. It's not like we're bringing in a clock from some Midwestern clock maker. Um, uh, this is the original one, and it was about to go on to the open market. Um, so it, it could easily have gone away from us. So I, I, um, I'm not, given it's given it provenance, I'm not, I'm not opposed to, to acquiring it. I think it's reasonable to spare us 10 grand uh, to this year, not so we don't have to restore it as well. But um, uh, I just want to make sure it doesn't slip through our fingers somehow and get broken or stolen or. Um, uh, that, uh, that there's some huge installation fee because uh, or it goes home like the mower that went home with the DVW. <laughs> <laughs> I might borrow my that we are on public television right now. <laughs> I, I have, can I make a comment? I don't, are you finished, David? I, can, I just want to, I, I don't understand why it's not going back to where it was forever. I remember when it was on uh, Main Street. I wouldn't be opposed to that. The city doesn't own it. The city doesn't own that property. Oh. The city doesn't have title to sidewalks, I don't believe. Usually the, you go out to the street to the right away, which is why they can force you to sweep it. So that area is sort of a weird two-tiered yeah. sort of location now, which it didn't used to be. So it, oh, it, it, it would make putting it there tough and still meeting ADA standards. Oh, it, did, it didn't used to be two tiered. Yeah, I thought no. it was two tiered. I, I think that's why they, they, remo they removed it when they did that. Oh. That was the story. Oh. I thought it was the owner. Someone thought they owned it. Yes, that's the third thing that I was saying. Uh, preservation restriction. And oh, otherwise, otherwise we're purchasing, but it could be sold. The city could sell it at a later date. Now we sort of run into a situation like the Lily Library windows, because it's hard to put a, a full preservation restriction on, on a fixed object. I so in that case, we required them to provide a letter saying that they, if they were ever to be sold, they'd offer them to the city first. So write a first refusal. Can we, I mean, we could have, right, once it's installed, would it be easier? place a preservation it restriction on it. would, but until it's installed. So until it's installed, we need to create the right to prevent yes. this alienation. To prevent its what? Sale. Well, we can't say it can't be sold unless it's installed preservation restriction on it. Sure we could. How? Oh. Just, 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 just say condition. Well, on first off, that's the council decision, and secondly, uh, well, no, but we're we're so saying we're this is our recommendation. They accept our recommendations or not. So our recommendation. So it would be, it would be council fine. saying you, the city will not. No, on that basis, fine. Yeah. I would like to add one other thing and, and sort of say, whereas the the uh, planning city planning director has indicated that the city would provide ongoing maintenance and uh, maintenance service required to keep the clock operating uh, once it's installed. In other words, you, Wayne specifically said that they would. Somebody can, uh, uh, DPW would wind it. Right, so you say, where is the... What? I, well, I, I mean, you're right. going to watch it's a dead clock thing. Um, if, we're, if we're funding this, right? So 
one last question for the council to ask about. Do we want to say the clock will ultimately be installed in a highly visible public downtown location, at which point a preservation restriction will be granted to the city? Who do you want to give it to, Sarah? It cannot be the city because it will be on the city. So who would it be? Well, we can we can just historic preservation restriction will be created. We'll have to find out who would be willing to take it. And so, planning put in the project request, but and we're we're speaking to them as if they shall not dispose of it. But uh, I fully you say the city. Yeah, I totally right. expect just say the DPW city. to store it and put it somewhere and be responsible. So you might as well just say the city shall not. Seconded by Devin. All in favor? Aye. Okay. So, oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. tip on the oh. on a minute. <laughs> that was pretty good. On a white neck I, I just say approved. I don't have to even say how many numbers there are. Just approved on the voice vote. But it wasn't approved. What's that? It wasn't approved. It was four to ten. Oh, it's four to ten. Just count them all. Just count them all. Oh, you changed. People yeah, changed change, their mind. Change my mind. Move to count them all. You can go to roll call. Good, four, four, two. All right. Um, so we did that one. So that means this will not go forward. To see. Correct. Because it's less than our the majority of the committee. I don't know. Listen back to this. Because. <laughs> no, I was the majority of the the majority of those present. Oh, we had this huge discussion, remember? We went back and forth about this, and we had resolution, and the resolution was done. <laughs> and I got an answer, but now I don't remember. We got an answer. Well, we're going to have to consult with our rules. Maybe I should change my mind again. We have this long discussion about this because there are nine of us, are there? Yeah. So Sarah, was yours a answer from the coalition? It wasn't. It was an answer from Believe the prior city solicitor? Yes. We asked Stewart when he came in the coalition to clarify, and we asked during the session with the coalition where they did the training, and we asked the Department of Revenue attorney for a clarification. Both of those were the same questions. What was their answer? <laughs> that it was the majority of the quorum present as opposed to the majority of the I mean, it says the community preservation committee shall not meet or conduct business with the presence of quorum. A majority of the members of the community preservation committee shall constitute a quorum. The community preservation committee shall approve its actions by majority vote. So it, it doesn't make sense that you, I mean, I, most bodies, it's the majority of the members present. And it doesn't make sense because then every time you have a bare quorum, you're requiring unanimity. 
right? If you had, if you have only a quorum, the quorum is the bare majority, which means everything has to be unanimous. That doesn't make sense to me. Right, and that was the interpretation because we went back and forth. Yeah, it's, just, it's, it right. it, it's an issue with the way the the enabling legislation was written that other communities do not have. But I I believe that's right. You're saying the the Northampton? No, the the full enabling. Legislation. Oh, I'm reading from the act. This is this yeah. Is, this so is, that's written is, very yeah. very poorly. Well, but I don't. I mean, usually when you say majority vote in whether you're talking about Congress or the legislature, you're talking about majority. I want to change president. my vote. Can I change my vote? I want to go along. Well, since I have a chair, I mean, you don't have to. I mean, I, I can no, make I'm a ruling okay as the chair. No, I'm okay changing it. It's I mean, fine. I'll you, you know, I mean, I can make a ruling as the chair that it's that I'm taking as the majority of members present. I think we'll, we'll just have to deal with uh, Call the other please. issues. I'll vote for Mama. That's okay. Okay. But it would be nice to clarify that. Yeah, yeah. Sarah, can put you it on the agenda. Yeah. 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 Clarify that point. I know I saved it in my my last email with the city lost all our Good email know. system. Yeah, we really need to know that because it took I'm like, sure. we were really set in our ways. That would be problematic. <laughs> but the ultimate arbiter of the act would be the DOR. And it really doesn't. You know, Stewart's advisory, even the, I mean, I guess our solicitor, city solicitor, would be um, important. But. All right, so we'll chase that down. But the next one, HAP 129 Pleasant Street Affordable Housing Project. And this is 48 units of affordable rental housing. Uh, we probably should put approximately in front of 48, and the units will be a mix of studio and one bedroom apartments. And this was my error, so I'm just fixing it. So the, the committee agreed that it was 60%. 60% of which will be restricted to those households earning at or below. And I'm going to change this too to make it consistent with the other one. Okay. Sir, I think it was 60% uh, or less. And then get rid of the add or below. Yes, 60% or 60% or less. All right. Any additional conditions to attach? Should we, should we have it? I don't know. I'm literally brainstorming, but a condition on the completion of. I mean, there's already one hole on this, right? Um, I mean, a delay in, I just want to make sure that, that, that if we're holding 300000 for them, that it gets used in a timely way. No, the only delay was that we, is that we approved it with conditions that could not be satisfied. It wasn't, it wasn't on their end, it was our, we placed some conditions on them that legally we could not make work with the city solicitor. So, um, so what is the normal required window? So three years is our normal contract period. They will be going forward with their application to DHCD. They want in February. Yeah, in, well. in the February round. But I think Johan said that DHCD is even opening up for sort of a pre-application even earlier than that. So, yeah. so they'll, be, they'll be moving forward. It may take them, like the Hospital Hill Project, it may take them a couple applications. A couple years to if, if there's two, if they hold two rounds a year, it might take them two or three rounds of applications. Sure. That they are they had another layer of a thirty percent. Uh they did yes. At the so the committee could get down to specifics about how they wanted to restrict the units. But at the last meeting it, it was just agreed on that we'd say sixty percent. Sixty 60% of the units at 60% or Yeah, so we discussed the same thing with the other, with Lumberyard. Lumberyard has 60, 50, 30%, and 30% with rent, with Section 8 rental assistance. So we just said to keep it simple since that mix will be 
probably dictated by DHCD more than us okay. to allow them to meet the standard of the act, which is 60%. Any additional changes? A motion to approve this otherwise? So moved. Okay. Second. Very well. Kevin noted. Um, all in favor? Okay. Opposed? I'm wondering if I should vote. You could recuse yourself oh, on this one as well since myself. it's a since yeah. it's close enough. Okay. All right. And currently taking no part in the vote or discussion. All right, so that moves us on to. So that's still unanimous, right? Was that an abstention? No, she's not abstaining. So she's not. An abstention is a vote. So she's oh, yes, okay. and taking no part. So that's. So. Um, so that's a recusal with the unanimous. Um, so Jackson Street Playground rehabilitation. Not as much of a consideration because they have a field. Yeah. They have their field. It's not, not pushing okay. snow onto anywhere else. So, so it should be manageable. All right. So the last one is. Uh, a couple more, don't we? Let's see. We did Sawmill. We did Pomeroy Terrace. We did. Oh, no, I'm sorry. We, had, we do have two. Um, the Bridge Street Cemetery. So um, at the last meeting, Dave suggested that we, and we did assent that work undertaken with CPA funds eligible for reimbursement would be that work described in the proposal, phase 1B and C. Phase two B, and that they would, of course, be free to fundraise to do as much of the other work as possible. But that we that we wanted our funds to focus on those tasks. So, so what what tasks? Uh, the tasks are. I mean, I know. So probably um, mapping. mapping. Historical research and historical oh, okay. development of the cemetery landscape. And gravestone and monument assessment. Cemetery landscape. Yes. I don't know that there is necessarily says landscape, it just says historical research. 
I don't want them to get confused with the landscape assessment and other aspects of landscape. I just said historical research. So that's what they've done. Research the historical development of the cemetery landscape is what they said. So you want to allow it to be just historical research? Uh, I'm, just, I'm reading from their budget. So. I, I don't see monument in the budget, just gravestone. Um, I think. I would assume that that includes markers. I mean, they may have said use gravestone as a shorthand because you can't fit gravestone and monument in that box. Yeah, in the in the description it does say gravestone and monument. Assessment. And the same thing, David. They say historical research is one C, but then if you look to the description, it says historical research or research the historical development of the cemetery of the cemetery landscape. Right. Or historical research period of significance. I don't know. I think if we look into the phases, then that's easier. Okay. I, you, can, you mean just the wording? Or you mean well, what you're reciting the, the actual? In the recital, that's fine. And then when we go to what the contract is, yeah. the approval of okay. We can specify as specified in phase one B C and phase two B. But we can put that there. No, I mean I think that that's what is the rest of it saying? Which the rest of this recommendation reads it? There's nothing else. Uh -huh. Whereas they have to remove the chain link pins. Can I go through this again? Yes. Phase one, the proposal is to fund it, A to B. Phase, uh, I'm looking at this, I'm looking at this sheet. Phase one is to fund B, B and B, C. B and C. So, and then phase two, B. Phase two, B, yes. Uh, those are the ones. So maybe in that last whereas, you voted to recommend that 16,000 be to use to support project phase areas. one B and C for scope of you know, of the budget. Refer to the budget and reference those particular phases on project so, so phase one B and C right so it's phase, phase two phase one B B and C phase two B as outlined in the project budget. Any additional changes to this? If there are none, we have a motion to approve it as amended. Sorry, I'm going to add one more. Oh, go ahead. One of my concerns was that there was a, this repeated reference to Ward 3 throughout the proposal as being kind of like the member of the public. Mm -hmm. And they identified the committee, which is going to be the one that oversees all of the development and plan, and doesn't. To me, that doesn't feel like a very open process to have it be a work through the other thing. I would just, maybe we can put it as a condition as opposed to a whereas, but have something that specifies that the committee referenced in A of phase one shall include members of the public as well as drawn from the entire yeah. ground. Yeah. You know, all work. Thank you, John. Yeah. Okay. Good suggestion. So just remember to throw that in the contract. Okay. There are folks from the entire city during the... Yes. Okay. So, Dave, would you like to make a motion to approve it as amended? Uh, sure, I do. Would anyone like to second it? <laughs> Devin would like to second it. All in favor? That's unanimous. Now we move on to the last one. 
So we are at Pulaski Park. <laughs> Oh, so we're not doing the because we vote against the Greenway. What, what about the little park fountain? We've done that. Um, we will move to those as well. Oh, I see. But these are the last one. Well, the last resolution. Um, the resolution for us is funding preparation of design plans and construction documents for the renovation, namely the portion known as the overlook. So this would be an additional grant of $54,000 um, with the understanding that um, they would be coming back to the committee most likely early in the next round with a request for expedited review because uh, which the committee is then reconsider and grant or not grant. But, they would like to be ready on July 1st if they can. They have construction funding to go forward with it. So. Conditions on this. Additional conditions. I don't know how much of a pill I want to be about the sidewalk and crosswalk, but I have been bothered by it from the beginning. I tried to work with them to change it. Now the city has moved to the crosswalk so that the major artery across the back of the park goes to a sidewalk, that, a crosswalk that doesn't exist. It's been moved down. And I really think that design needs to get looked at given that. The city made a change that I think affects the park now. Thank you, I've said my piece, I'm done. Do you, I mean, so do you think that that back area makes doesn't make sense now that the crosswalk's not there because people walking to South, to all the neighbors off South Street, they probably didn't want to cross anyway, right? They got to that they sidewalk. Did, although there's been a hundred emails about this in the last week since they moved the sidewalk, the crosswalk in, in that neighborhood. Because they don't like it? It's a mix. Most people are happy the barrels are gone, so it's all about the cars, but the, the, there have been people still using the old crosswalk. I I'm, the, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just doing over this. No, I take the point. Here. I think it's a, it's a very interesting point. And, and I just, and well worth discussion and, and, and review and, and possible change. I just don't, uh, should we kind of hold this project? No, I think off Jim, was, that, Jim was pretty convincing, and, and I felt comfortable with his uh, oversight of the project after he spoke to us last meeting. Okay. And, and I told him so. Um, I, I do think somebody should be scratching their head about the design of going to a crosswalk that's not. But I, I don't think it's our, I don't think that that is not really our purview, is my thinking. Uh, well, just, just, should, uh, just to take down any point, though, should there be, uh, are we, by the current design of Blackton Park, are we encouraging flow into the middle of a street? Into the middle of the block as it is now. Yeah. And should there then be modification of the landscaping or the fixtures, uh, street side fixtures, so as to prevent unsafe entrance into the street? Maybe they'll just move the crosswalk back. <laughs> well, I don't know. Uh, when they built the park. Just so that little kids don't that ride, no, little kids don't ride their bikes down the down the sidewalk and being out into the street where there used to be a sidewalk. It used to be a crosswalk. Uh, um, I'm not getting the, where the location of the crosswalk issue is. I'm just saying if we create a funnel that's dangerous yeah. uh, by the elimination of the crosswalk, well, this uh, moves the crosswalk. You, should we do something about that? But isn't this 54,000 for the overlook? Yeah. Yes. So we should we could revisit this if we approve mm -hmm. the design. Yeah. Yes. Right. Well, that we'll, would make sense. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Um, anything about yes. The only other issue is as they tie all this together, the area behind the Academy of Music. I, I hope that that will also be yeah, we that in the last clear, meeting clear, we with clarified them. as to exactly what is parkland and what is not. All right. Is it clear enough to City Council that this is for the overlook and we don't mention the overlook at all? Yeah. yeah. It seems like we should say reference fifteen four thousand funds to be used for, for the, the design and construction 
plan. Uh, plans for the overlook to complement those plans that are already due to us and have not yet been delivered. Yeah. Yes. Should we uh, put that in the reservation? Yeah. But we already have schematics, so we can't say. Yeah. Put a little yeah, diagram of a poker going into something. What, what was the wording? The, the actual uh, wording? <laughs> funding for the fund. Uh, funding, funding for the fund. Funding. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything about when we submit an application for me to fund, to fund, just to fund, to fund the preparation? Well, we accept that they submitted a plan for the funding of the construction of the park in addition to it. Um, to the park, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Can't you just restrict the overlook piece in the last one? Just like we did um, for with, the, with the phase one and two? Well, in, in the first, we could say, um, whereas I think Board of Public Works submitted an application that in, uh, for community preservation that included funding. Yeah. Well, or, or I haven't found that. Or we can say that the application submitted was for construction of the park in its existing form okay. and an additional amount for design work and construction for the remainder. And then we say we construct we're, we're giving approval for the plan and we're waiting until we actually I'm gonna accompany this document oh, to so your have them. So I will <coughs> tell them the posture and why nice. why we are doing fifty four thousand dollars that they may very well see because there's a four hundred thousand dollar park grant coming to mind. So I will I will provide them with that background. Um, the include preparation of design plans and construction items for the renovation and no, we, for for the overlook. Ooh. Is this where we're gonna put the overlook? Yeah. Yes, for the overlook portion. Overlook portion of the renovation. Well it's not really so that it's taken the last square? No, you're still in, this, in that well, first. That's what we did last there. time. We put it in the. We put the over the. You can just change renovation, right? For instead of for the renovation, of for construction documents for the overlook portion of design for the overlook portion of the landscape park. And we can say proposed overlook portion. We want to be mm -hmm. technical about it because it doesn't exist. All right. So, any additional amendments? In which case, someone move approval of this as amended. So moved. Second by Devin. All in favor? I'm looking at it. And it's unanimous. All right. So, as Brian pointed out, since all of our decisions, we agreed that they were tentative, we still do have the Wood Park Fountain, the Right to Farm signage, and the River Greenway, and Greenway Gardens. like to move to reconsider any of these or revisit them at this point. I can't even remember. Did, did we, we vote against the uh, yeah. We did. We did. We considered partial funding, um, but decided in the end to not partially fund the dismantling or to fund the dismantling and leave them with a hole in the ground. But that I would communicate to them that if they if they felt that there was a danger that uh, the portions that they would come back to us and if they needed to come back to us for an expedited application, that that would be appropriate if they felt that like they were going to lose something this season. And so, so what is the balance of funds that we did not spend thus far? It was, I, not much. I, I have 180, 289 as a note from last time. I think that was the neighborhood. Okay. We did not bond. 
So my, my instructions from you in terms of communicating with these three applicants was, as I've just stated about the Look Park Fountain, um, with the right to farm signage that we supported it in concept but wanted some further information about how it would how the signage would precisely work with a land you know, in areas of landscape where there was not protected land and how it would actually do what the CPA which is how would how would it work to be part of a preservation uh, mission. And then the greenway, I think the principal consideration there was access was that we needed evidence that the trustees were supportive of building the access, otherwise we would be building a garden that nobody could get to. Mm -hmm. And that once that was ironed out, that we thought it would be reasonable that we could fund some, at least some portion of it to get it going. With that then, that was moved to memorialize our original roads. To what? To incur <laughs> prior vote. To so there would be no change or reconsideration of law or language here. There is, there is, this is, this is, we are accepting, we are accepting our votes from, from our previous meeting as, being, right, as our, our previous negative votes. So is there the second? Second. Okay, so. Oh, no, it's fine. So all in favor? All right, so those votes are now. And now we have to go on to uh, small grants. This will be right next round. Right. That's why we saved that hundred and eighty thousand. Yeah. Motion to adjourn is in order. So move. Second. Is this it? All in favor? Is this it? Is this it for December? This is the round. Yes. Oh.